Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friends, Sam Clement and Courtney Trush. Y'all say hello. Hey, How's John. it going? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. You know, Sam, Courtney, recently I've been reading a lot. I mean, obviously, inflation's gone through the roof. Uh, government recently announced that 12-month uh, 12 inflation hit 9.1%, the highest level in some 40 years. But more than that, I think a lot of people are thinking it's not necessarily supply chain disruptions. It's not necessarily too much money sloshing about in M2. It's not all these things. It's not Russia. It's none of that. It's actually something called greed inflation. Corporate greed. Corporate greed is causing this inflation. What do you think about that, Sam? Well, it sells well. I mean, uh, you know, we'll obviously to start to, 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 the to media. <laughs> oh, yeah. To, to, to politicians saying this is nothing that we could have done, nothing that we could have caused. You know, hindsight being 2020, there's still nothing we could have done better. It's because these companies are being so greedy that they're just raising prices and screwing us all over. But isn't that, I mean, I guess that that's the conundrum, right? That a company. Who are they answering to? Their shareholders. That's right. So if there is a demand, right, the price of mm -hmm. goods goes up. So why wouldn't they take advantage? I mean, of course, as the consumer, it makes us mad. But, I mean, y'all look at the numbers, and as the business owners, I mean, are you surprised? Well, no, of course not. I mean, the thing about it is uh, economics is really nothing more than... Uh, the confluence of uh, supply and demand, you know, right. and that's that's what it is. And businesses are out there trying to, as you mentioned, maximize profit. Uh, and so they're going to try to get the highest price they possibly can as long as the market will pay for it. And, and that's just, there's not, you can call it greed. You can be Gordon Gecko and, and call it greed as much as you want, but that's simply the way life works. And that's the way business works. Businesses aren't the business. Yeah, that's right. Businesses are in the business of being a 501c3, a charity. You know, when, when a company's in business to turn a profit, they have shareholders that are expecting a return on their investment. It is in the company's best interest and, frankly, in, in the company's, I mean, that just overall business model to maximize profit. I mean, I, I don't see what is so wrong with that. However, when inflation is as high as, as it is, people are pointing fingers at just about anything to try to explain it, as opposed to actually taking a look at what's actually caused it. Yeah, I mean, we've clearly seen a supply shock over the last couple of years, and that's obviously a big part of it. Energy prices going up, that's been a big part of it. And it's just been easy to point towards corporations as continuing to be the big bad party in, in this whole situation and you know it, it doesn't really kind of line up you know these companies have input prices too That's it's right. not like they're just like pulling something out for free and then selling it at whatever price they want to i mean whether it's you know consumer staple companies that we've talked about recently you know they have energy prices they have to transport things they have costs for plastic bags and you know their, their goods itself. I mean, everything's going up, so it's not necessarily. And you, I don't think you're really seeing price gouging in the margins either. Well, you say that, Sam, and I, I would agree. I think that that's why the consumer excuses the increase in cost because they understand that everything costs more, right? And so that ultimately that funnels down to the consumer, and they're paying more. But when you then hear that profit margins are historic highs, so they're paying ten or the profit margin is ten percent for some companies, okay, and historically their profit margin has maybe been 3 to 4%, then your argument of saying, oh, well, the cost of their goods is higher, so their profit margin is staying the same, it's just the overall cost is going up, that's null and void because, no, they're taking but, advantage of the market and they're taking a higher profit But these companies margin. aren't earning, uh, you know, these a lot of these companies, they may be higher revenue, but they're missing on their actual earnings. They're not making a much higher level of profit, and I think it's worth so what is separating, I think it's worth separating out energy companies versus what's happening in the rest right. of the market. I think that is very important to this because you look at the environment going on with energy companies and a company that for pretty much most people agree has a shorter runway. You know, everyone's talking about the the fossil fuels we're not going to be relying on them 10, 20, 30 years and, and, and government policies have continued to punish these energy companies and disincentivize them from putting money back into the ground and continuing to pump more oil and they have continued to incentivize them to make more profits now and return profits to shareholders. So these companies, because that's how they've been incentivized, are having stronger profit margins because so far everyone's telling them they're not going to be a company in well, 20 it's, years. It's also, I mean, the energy industry or sector is also um, very volatile. 
you know, in 2020 when crude oil won to negative negative numbers uh, for the yeah, month of April, um, energy companies were bleeding red ink. And so you can make the argument that over a full economic cycle, the energy uh, companies will end up making a certain measure of profitability. But, Courtney, going back to what you're talking about, 8, 9, 10 percent, I think an article by the New York Times said it's close to 10 percent, whereas traditional profit margins are closer to 5 percent. I've got to ask, ask you and I've got to ask everyone, is a 10 percent profit margin egregious? If you go into business for yourself and you make $1 out of every ten dollars in revenue, are you sitting there saying, "My gosh, I'm the greediest SOB on the planet"? And I would argue that no, I don't think a ten percent profit margin is outrageous when when you're running a business, especially at a time where you know we've talked about this is the first real interest rate hiking cycle that we've experienced right. in some time. Lower interest rates compress a lot of things in, in markets and in the economy, and and companies can go out and accept lower profit margins and and, and lower overall margins when interest rates are low and they can get cheaper debt and they can just fund their company at these much lower levels, it maybe makes sense to be able to accept lower and lower margins and, and, and you know fight on price a little bit more. But you know, when times are like this, you have to stick to your prices and be a little rigid. Well, and I think with anything, there will be, as people realize that it's more profit margin and not inflation, I think that's what bothers me as the consumer is that it seems that it's playing off of the ignorance of the consumer that they just think, oh, well, this is the cost of what it's going to be right now because of inflation. And they blame whatever reason for inflation um, that they have. But to me, I'm like, if you historically had a four or five percent profit margin and you are playing off of the ignorance of your consumers, I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. That's business. And you have to inform yourself as the consumer. But it was surprising to me. And then it was like, okay, well, then I'll take my business elsewhere. Either I won't use that product, I won't buy it, mm -hmm. or um, I'll wait until someone undercuts them because mm -hmm. they're going to realize eventually the demand is going to go down because people can't afford to pay necessarily that amount of money. Or maybe they can, I don't know. But I just think that that was surprising to me that it would go, I mean, it would double their profit. Well, essentially, it does go back to the supply and the demand curve graph. I mean, that's I mean, that's where those two intersect is the market clearing price. If the market clearing price is is higher, we can blame whoever, whatever we want, but that's just simply the way it is. Um, we can we can argue that over time, as prices continue to go up, and this is what Basic Econ 101 will tell you: if prices continue to go up for some reason. Um, you know, at some point, man will go down. I mean, that's right. just that's just the long and short of it. And so, um, you know, inflation this go around, I would say greedflation. I mean, yeah, it it it's it tugs on the heartstrings. It's uh, it's something that the person of a political tilt uh, tilt will sit there and say, look at these greedy companies doing all this stuff. I read an article from uh, CBS that was talking about uh, Berkeley professor Robert Reich, who, who yeah. used to be in the Obama administration, if not Clinton administration. Anyhow, these he's a Democrat. And um, he's very, very intellectual, very bright guy. But he uh, pointed out something about Tyson Foods uh, making an additional billion dollars over the last 12 months or what have you. And that sounds absolutely outrageous. I mean, they made an additional billion dollars. However, when people start throwing around absolute dollars, it's a, it doesn't tell the full story. Tyson right. did make an additional billion dollars. But it was, but they had re revenue of fifty-one billion. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a two percent, two percentage point increase. Also, in that billion bucks is their cost of goods sold. Their yep. cost of revenue had gone up over three billion dollars over the last twelve months, and their revenue went up around four billion. And so that's their operating profit margin. The thing about it is, when companies make more money, guess what? They also pay a lot more in taxes. And so when people start complaining about greedflation, all these companies are, are making too much money, they're screwing the American consumer, they're also giving a heck of a lot of money, a heck of a lot more money back to the US government. Sam, your thoughts? No, I mean, it, it doesn't help me. It doesn't necessarily help you, but it helps, uh, it helps the federal government. Right. So but when, when you hear um, government officials complaining about greedflation, you're talking out of both sides of their mouth, they're not really completely understanding what's going on <laughs> because this is what, this is what happens. Bad greedflation, bad greedflation, bad for the consumers, screwing the consumers, higher tax revenue. All of a sudden, lower prices, lower prices, less tax revenue. These big bad yeah, companies aren't they're, paying they're, their fair share. Yeah, these companies that you can go out and find R and D and ways to depreciate assets and all these things to you know not make as much money and not pay as much taxes, and then your 
screwing over the government, apparently. So. Well, and I know in the article... I think they, we sound pretty simple. I know, you do. Shocker. Um, <laughs> no, I think that they had also said, if I'm correct, either in the article or somewhere else that I was um, reading, they were talking about how... Um, oh, I totally just lost my train of thought. Okay, we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> Even on podcasts, you can lose your train of thought. No, just, they're just a bunch of dead, dead space. So they just complete silence while Some Courtney figures out what she wants to what she wants to say. I've, Got I, nothing. I've known I've known Courtney for nine years now, and I've rarely find her at a loss for words. Sam, I, I, I would agree. You know, you've uh, known yeah. her for less than that, but I mean, here we are. Courtney sitting there staring at her hands and what have you, and she just can't remember what she was going to say. But undoubtedly, judging from her comments uh, thus far this podcast it's about big bad corporate corporate america screwing the evil. consumer okay evil I, thank you thank you so much because now i remembered no, so, my conversation here she comes yes okay so it was about how do you fix this right other than knowing what the profit margin is for companies it was like okay well how do you i guess reprimand them for taking advantage of the poor innocent consumer i don't think you do well I, but it, hey they said that who's you, they the article, I don't know. They were saying that the only way you could is through regulation. Oh, good boy. Exactly. That is, that is the, the government most regulation. most dreaded word in well, our right. language. And it's like, well, the government regulation. needs to come in and basically say, and I was like, okay, well, then it's like, okay, they, you can only have the American dream up to this amount, and then, you well, know. Well, yeah, gonna... which, is, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's anyone that wants to put the maximum level of profit that a corporation can make is is These like, windfall like, taxes like, is, is unintentionally saying they, they want to put uh, you know a ceiling on how much money they can make as an individual and, and look at it in terms of again going back to energy companies if they had this sort of windfall tax I mean do you know how much worse a lot of these issues that we're experiencing in the energy market would be if we even more incentivize them not to to drill more, not to put money back into the ground, and not to pump more oil. I mean, it, 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 it it's so short-sighted and sounds great and causes so much irreparable damage, and it's the same kind of thought process that's got us into this situation over the last two years. And I think it goes back to kind of what you were saying, I mean, what sells in the media, because mm -hmm. people get emotional about it. They're taking advantage of me, right? Nobody wants to be taken advantage of. But they also are reporting their profit margins and reporting kind of to your point. Tyson, I mean, they're reporting their mm -hmm. profits and mm -hmm. information. So it's, if someone, it's not like they're keeping it a secret and that someone doesn't have access to the information. They can choose not to buy that product if they feel strongly about it. Well, the thing is, you know, going back to that uh, example, I talked about CBS used and Robert Reich with uh, Tyson making an additional billion dollars more in profit. That's their operating profit. Yeah. And it's not their after-tax profit. The, the company actually ended up spent, uh, paying uh, the about an additional $400 million worth of um, taxes uh, and all, all, all shapes and sizes. So their actual increase was $600 million, which is still a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have that same ring as a billion, does it? There's an additional $600 million left over for shareholders, if I remember correctly, after taking a look at their income statement for about four or five minutes. And, you know, that's that's just part of doing business. You know, if I can, if I can generate an additional $600 million after tax on $51 billion worth of sales, I think outside of a bunch of people who want to make a, make an issue out of it, I don't think you find very many people that sit there and say, gee whiz, Tyson's really clocking. Well, that's your duty as, as the people who are making those decisions and directors of companies. I mean, that is your your fiduciary duty as a director of the company is to, is to increase profits and return mm -hmm. profits to shareholders as the person that you talk to. And this this whole conversation just seems like deflecting of policy errors over the last two With, years. Without I mean, there, doubt. there's it, it's it's laughable to even think that this is the main issue that's caused inflation to get to nine. Well, nothing else is stuck. When it doesn't matter what political party we we blame just about everything for inflation. We we blamed. Everything we can, with the exception Putin, of Putin you know, price hikes, yeah, yeah. Uh, greedy big bad corporations, and so uh, something's got to stick. You can't sit there and say we blew up the Fed's balance sheet by five trillion, by five trillion, and we Wait, direct we, deposited money into yeah, people's checking accounts. We account. spent the Treasury spent five, an additional five trillion dollars that we didn't have. You know, no one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know, we, we shut down the economy and then opened it back up and gave people wallets full of cash. We destroy of course, supply and artificially increase demand all at the same time. So is COVID to blame? No. Uh, the, the response to it is to blame. 
There you have it. Courtney's, Courtney's looking like she's not necessarily sold on what you just said right there. She's got finger hey, to the mouth. Man, hey, listen, I'm, hey, hey, it's all, it's, all, it's all wavy gravy right there. It it's, is <laughs> unprecedented how we responded to this. L- truly unprecedented. Well, of course it is. I mean, it was a global pandemic. We've had global pandemics before, and we never direct deposited money into people's accounts, and we never shut down businesses. When was the last time we had a global pandemic that you recall? Look, even <laughs> in your lifetime, there, I don't recall there's, one. There's been other than this one. Even, 40, even, I'm so old that I remember <laughs> the Spanish flu. <laughs> <Spanish, laughs> yeah. even, even, we... even, even you know, not a pandemic, but in terms of 2008, with with the programs that we responded to that with, we didn't direct deposit money into people's accounts. I mean, that would have seemed right. insane. The tarp package seemed insane at the time, and that's what one seventh or eighth of what we spent. And the thing is, the government got its money back. Yeah, from the and, tarp and package. handsomely. Yeah, handsomely made a nice. That was one of the best tarp. investments the government has ever made was the tarp program, and here we are it's giving a, out money to people to absolutely blow on useless retail goods that they've done over the past two years, and then now we've had this this just absolutely horrid situation with inflation at 9%. So I've got shifting gears, Sam, a little bit. Based on what you just said, have you finished with your uh, with your bunker yet? With the yeah, stockpile exactly. your I, I got that? some more canned food to get. <laughs> you got to wait until it's like buy one, get one free. That's all right. Which you're seeing, seeing a lot, a lot, more, of you're a lot yeah. more of that hey, recently. I'm, I'm taking advantage of it. Uh, okay. well, are those companies, if they're greedy when they're raising prices, are they, you know. Altruistic. Yeah, and, are they altruistic now that they're doing BOGOs? Oh, I don't know. Why are you asking me? Ask John. Uh, well, of course. I mean, if, that, if that's yeah, the situation. Yeah, I mean, you can't have one without the other. Well, the thing is, so think too many BOGOs, to income Tyson. goes down, taxes go down, and then, Tyson's then that's bad news. Tyson's not doing BOGO. I haven't seen it on BOGO. Okay. Well, well there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, Courtney, have, have we answered the questions, all the questions that you had about greedflation? Is greedflation really a thing? I would sit there and say, uh, Yeah. Kind of. Sure. Companies are out to make a profit. I'd say it's no different. Yeah, it's it's no different than what it ever is. It just so happens that for all the other reasons that we've discussed, inflation was already high. Right. And so you throw in just the basic tendencies of corporations to try to maximize their profit, you've come up with a nice term for it, greedflation, and that sells to uh, angry masses that are trying to put put their finger on why their wilds are sh- they're shrinking. And it also helps with the unknown going forward with this situation we're in with unique, the uniqueness of the Fed hiking rates so rapidly. And really, you see a lot of CEOs saying, we don't really know what our next 12, 24 months is going to be. Anybody in a situation, an unknown financial situation going forward is going to do their best to prepare themselves for that situation. I know that y'all have put together the Oakworth Capital Bank, and I'm not sure if that's the official title. The OCPI. The Oakworth Capital Bank, yes, the that's, that is the name of the company. <laughs> no, the Which, by the way, that's... is a for-profit business, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I just yes. want you to know thank that. Thank you, thank you. The more profit clarifying. we make, the more we have to pay you. Right, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Greed doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> yeah, no. um, but for the Consumer Price Index, are y'all seeing um, clear profit margins or I guess the percentage of increase I know that y'all have different levels of that consumer price index is it you know about the staple goods versus well the, the thing is it's impossible for us to tell what the profit margins are going to be at Walmart or Publix or even at the at the producers level all we're doing is just tracking the prices of, of right. and what have you uh, basically and Sam correct me if you think that I'm way off base it does seem as though the cost of living is going up a little bit faster than the cost of living at all okay. all that all that both are going up at levels at least through June that no one really feels terribly good about. And I think you're starting to see some cracks in it, too. You know, yeah. this is something that we're very ingrained in, and we, we pull this data every couple weeks, and and I'm seeing the data that I'm pulling start to turn over in a lot of areas. Yeah. Well, I guess that's promising. Well, I these, am too. these altruistic grocery companies are just really trying to help the consumer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After, after their years of greed. Courtney, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if we answered the question about greedflation to your satisfaction. I feel like we did. Uh, but we did answer the question about the Oakworth um, Consumer Price Index. And that is, for anyone that wants to take a look at it, it's out, out underneath the Thought Leadership tab at oakworth.com. Uh, please, by all means, go and go take a look at it. But, Sam, I mean, do you, I mean, do you have anything else about this greedflation for Courtney? No, I, I think we've uh, Just summed me. up my thoughts, at least. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, guys, thank you all so much for listening. We always love to hear from you all, so if you have any questions or comments, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at oakworth.com, at trading perspectives at oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. Of course, as I just mentioned, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we have to say or how we think, please, by all means, go to oakworth.com and take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab for all kinds of exciting information, including the Oakworth Consumer Price Index. All right, guys. Any last words on this topic? That's all I got. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.